how do you mitigate the acts of a monster? How do you litigate the crimes of the dead? The pale poison. To defend against those more admirable, the weakling evolves to accommodate threats in curious ways. Hitherto, the most insipid, pallid, and weak of creatures dispenses the most vitriolic impotent of poisons. With a palate prone to turn green upon different seasons and a covetous appetite for greed and usury. A paleontological parasite born of the stars had fallen to earth before. As a living fossil, it festered in the dirt where young man first walked. Its capillaries reached all. Even fair providence where collector of unusual works and antiquities was studying at the Miskatonic University. Bile bubbled in his gut. He looked at the at the artifacts before him. This collector, he was no stranger to the strange. He'd spent time in the Arctic, white deserts, uninhabitable, and yet previously so. He had discovered Cyclopean cities built by a race of giants long before the small man took what he thought was his. And he had been lost in these labyrinths of ice. He had seen things horrors beyond horror, unknowable things, forbidden knowledge, but not just that, knowledge that he did not want to know, knowledge that he judged was best left hidden. There he was, myopic, weak, insipid, frail. All of the adjectives that you would apply to the dying. The bile bubbled in his gut. He perused the collection and looked at what the doctors and professors at the Miskatonic University had put on display for this exhibit of Assyrian 
Sumerian and Babylonian antiquities. Nothing quite as fancy, unless it was a mirror, for then he would witness his own reflection. Do not forget, the professor turned and said to him, the self-absorbed devour themselves alone. The professor, who was from Europe, possibly the Mediterranean, handed the collector a strange item indeed, something so plain, so meaningless, so ugly. It was a root, a root not born of a seed, but grown of its own. The professor explained he had found it in the lands of the Visigoths in other ancient civilizations. He handed it to the collector, who handled it himself. The root, it was pallid like him, pale. It was mature, it frail like a baby. He asked the professor, what's so special about this root? You have a table of riches, and this is what you show me? The professor laughed and said that it was the oldest treasure that there was, older than man, and older than any of the beautiful items that were laid before them. It was then that the collector was overcome with an urge, a hunger unlike any other. It was true. He was self-absorbed. But for him, if self-absorption meant a desire for knowledge, forbidden or otherwise, then what was wrong with it? All of a sudden, the collector took a bite out of the room. And swallowed it. Oh, he didn't know what he had done. There was nothing to be gained from the literal consumption of items. <laughs> he was just about ready to be arrested when the professor looked at him and started laughing. <laughs> well, the collector, despite everything and being in the wrong, didn't understand and reacted poorly. He looked at the professor and said, why are you laughing? I just took a bite out of your legacy, your life, you fool. The professor kept laughing and said, no, you didn't. You took a bite out of yourself. So the collector decided to leave. He put the root back down on the table where he found it and bid the professor a very rude farewell. He got in his car and drove back to his home. He went inside and that night he slept like a baby. But the next morning he awoke early and something was up. He didn't feel well didn't feel like his usual self. He was reminded, reminded at times he'd been on expeditions to faraway places, mysterious lands, countries best left forgotten. He thought at the uh, professor and remembered he had eaten the root No wonder he felt a little under the weather, he thought. But then, the strangest thing started happening. The man, the 
collector, frail as he was, felt the cold even more sharply than usual. He was shivering. If he didn't get warm, he, he felt like he was gonna he was gonna die of hypothermia. So he lit a fire. And the fire brought the temperature up. He checked his mercury reader. It was hot, but he wasn't feeling it. He went into his kitchen, made a sandwich, but couldn't keep the food down. Made him feel sick. So he decided to feed his fish instead. But when he went through to the room where he keeps his fish, he was overcome with fear. He was afraid of the marine life forms before him. No. The collector, he was a rational man. He had abandoned the faith a long time ago, did not believe in God, any pantheon, monotheist, or polytheist, or anything. He believed, he liked to sit in science, but really, he didn't believe in nothing but himself. And so rationally, he knew that the fear was born of evolution. Why? Because the ocean is full of crazy stuff that is, frankly, terrifying. Why would anyone want to go down there? Furthermore, it was cold. And for whatever reason, he had become sensitive to the cold. He was already myopic, but he felt his eyesight going even more. He felt wretched, like a baby again. But this time, not rested, but weak. How could he be like this? He had always been so strong. He had been born with it. Born with power. Who, or what, would dare to take that away from him? How could someone or something take something that was his birthright? He left the house with no appetite, no ability to sleep, getting frosty and being scared of the fish. He put on all of his coats, as well as an old Russian shapka that he found there. As he walked down the busy Providence streets, he saw everyone else with so much more. They had such wealth that they were taken for granted. He squinted at these people, concentrating on them, trying to understand why, why they had all this stuff. And he had lost everything that he held dear. But that was when he found out that that root for him, well, it was not a curse, it was a gift, a gift from beyond the stars. found that if he concentrated hard enough on someone, he could inflict his own poison onto them, project it so that they would feel it too. He laughed as he concentrated on a young couple who looked happy. He projected his sniffle weakness onto him. He laughed to himself. For what he could achieve with such an ability. But as with all things, there was a catch. The covenant that he had 
formed with the stars required sacrifice of his own nothing material nothing physical but in order to project he would need to acquire and so the collector started his quest once again he traveled he had always resented other nations other races he was always envious of what they had and disparaging of what they did not nothing could ever be as it was for him disease after disease he would go to the most remote places in the world in order to discover any illness he could acquire syphilis, cancer, everything got to the point that there were no known diseases for him to collect anymore and as his desire to inflict, project his own illness, his own insecurities grew so did his desire to acquire new disease and he was drawn back to the Arctic and I will tell you that the circumstances were ridiculous he required the team to follow him at all times to carry a fire a hearth to keep him warm because of his weakness to the cold and the amount of medication that he was on meant that he could barely function due to his desire to acquire diseases so rare so as to project them onto others to acquire what they had and he could never look down for through the ice he could see what he feared the most the unknown still a block of ice they hacked with picks at a wall and pulled it out there was a bubble a bubble in the ice the experts who will come with him on this journey they estimated that this block of ice was older than time this pleased the collector who asked that they drill a tiny hole into the ice and from that hole the collector pressed his warm lips which froze instantly and he inhaled that ancient air inside of him and then they melted the ice and he drank it a peculiar thing happened inside the man the collector his quest was a success for he had found the ultimate the frailty the ultimate of illness and were he able he could inflict this illness upon the world and in the decimation that would follow collect whatever he wanted for himself but no
the ancient water and the ancient air. Well, it gave life to the root that was deep inside the man. The pale root blossomed and it would have appeared that the flower was of every color with the rainbow, a celebration, everything but white. The root expanded, grew through the flesh of the collector, splinters pushing their way out of his body, micro bioorganic materials flow into his blood, solidifying, turning his veins, his capillaries, into roots, until the collector was dead. The professor, so long ago, had said to him that the self-absorbed consume themselves. This pale man, whose life was of avarice, coveting those he despised and loved, never being content with what he was. The pale man was consumed by himself. And I ask, How do we mitigate the acts of monsters? How do we litigate the crimes of the dead? Well, we do not. We bury them. the only thing that'll stop